We don't take it to the Lord in prayer. Rather than pray, we work. Huh? We just work. It's so much easier to worry than to pray, right? That's the only that example right there. But it's the truth. It's so much easier to work than it is to pray. All because we do not care. How many things? I just blessed this choir this morning. Song, this I just been such witness to God's word. Amen. Hey, remember sometimes some of them. Yeah, you got to sit there. I just saw you start off with those words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we, 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 we've taken that word and we don't want to say The word simply means what? Praise the Lord. It's all down to The word hallelujah actually means pray. The yah on it is Yahweh. Praise the Lord. What we have now spelled J A H originally was what we call Y A H, and it's an abbreviation of Yahweh. All praises to who? To Yahweh, the name of God. All praises to God. Amen. And I tell people talking about the highest praise. The highest form of praise is what? Obey. That's the highest form of praise. Is your obedience. And it's about your obedience. I know that you did some praise to the Lord. Yes, yes, we just want to raise all of our hand and disobey. That don't count. That don't count. But God is good. And I'm going to say it. Hallelujah. Amen. He has done what? Won the victory. And what was that victory? You said what? Death couldn't keep him on my ground. And the ground. So which means then because death couldn't keep them in the ground, death can't keep me in the ground. Yes, sir. Have nothing yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. And so your songs are just because it's, it's, it's amazing because your songs are the opposite of what I'm gonna preach. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, does it? So what that says is we know the words. We just don't act on the word. That's what makes it so interesting. The young people there are encouraging us to do what? You have a victory. Yes, We're not looking for a, a victory. You said we are victorious because death couldn't keep him. So we already have a victory. So why don't we act like... You see, that's why I said the message is the opposite of the song. It doesn't make sense. That says we know the word. We know the word. And I'm going to... Let me read you something out of Romans chapter 8. When life pushes back on us, in other words, when life gets hard, huh? Hey. When life gets hard, that's how Paul is talking to this thing. In Romans chapter 8, verse 31, he says, What then shall we say to life when life gets hard? When life pushes back on us? Huh? He said, You just need to remember what? Who's for you? That's what they're saying about the one that is for you. They said, but I don't understand it. So see, we know the word. We know that when life gets hard, what then shall we say to life? And life's challenges, its situations, its circumstances, its frustrations, its worries, its ups, its downs, its bad doctor's reports, the losing of jobs, and all that stuff. You just have to remember one thing. Who is for you? Yeah. And if you know that he is for you, then what else do you know? That nothing can be against you. You know that no weapon can be formed against you that will prosper. That's what they were saying about. Because all of that is grounded in the victory. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we know the words. Lord help me, Jesus. And then he goes on to say, Paul says, Knowing that he's for you, then who can 
what shall who shall separate you from the love of God? Then he begins to name it. Tribulation. Distress. Persecution. Famine. Nakedness. Peril. Sword. In all these things, we are what? More than conquerors. I'm not just a conqueror. Yeah. I am more than a conqueror. Because I'm persuaded that nothing can separate me from Jesus Christ. Amen. Those are the words. Those are the right words. So this morning, in contrast to what we just read about being more than conquerors, then here's the challenge to you this morning. How to hold on when you feel like giving up. Huh? How do you make those words real? Hallelujah. Huh? When life is not being fair right now. When you are in the valley looking up at the mountaintop. When you're wondering how you're going to get over. Huh? Because typically what is our reaction and our response to that? Giving up. And I'm talking about the church. I ain't talking about the world. The world is doing what the world doing. I'm talking about you and I. Giving up is never an option for a believer in Jesus Christ. Not an Amber is leading that song. And she starts it off by saying what? Praise the Lord. She says, praise the Lord. We have won the victory. Then, and now you're talking to me about giving up. That doesn't make sense. That's, that's, that's like Reverend AJ said this morning. That's like praying and then worrying. He said if you're going to pray, but if you want to worry and that clearly is your choice, then what should you not do? Because that's called a waste of your time. Why would you pray to God and then turn around and worry? Then you don't understand this victory that we have in him. Truth for the matter is, we all have felt like giving up. Yeah. And if you say you have never felt like giving up, then my challenge to you is keep living. You will. Because sometimes that mountain, and you don't have to wait to be, be up on your own to feel like giving up. How many times have that class, that lesson, that project been so frustrated that you just wanted to give up? I'm going to take it, yes. I'm going to take it. I quit. Am I right? Look, when you sit in that room by yourself, amen, and you look at all that, the, and, and let me tell you about it. Let me tell you about college. Because every college professor acts like you only taking one class. That's right. That's right. Y'all act like you take one class. That's all you got to do is that one class. Man, every one of them pile it on. And then when you leave, at the end of the day, you sitting there burdened down, because then you got this, and all that sits before you. And the normal reaction to it is to what? Throw your hands up. And just say, I, I, I just ain't gonna get there. Everybody acts like I ain't got nothing else to do in life. Huh? Try to get a degree and going to work. And that's after you take care of the children. Because <laughs> you can't put them on the shelf. Right? So you gotta work. Take care of the children. Now let me add on to that. Because they're not the same. And take care of your husband or your wife. Oh, that's another whole set. That's another way that guy. That's another sermon. That's another sermon because you got to take care of your husband or your wife. You can't stand up there and tell me come off the children. I'm going to sit right there and look at you. And say nothing. I was here first. <laughs> what I'm painting for you are situations 
that we tend to believe have become hopeless. Yes. And every one of us at some point sit there and we hold our head in our hands. And we see no way out. I don't want to believe in Jesus Christ. The yeah, the words of the song have faded. I don't even know about my hallelujah and praise the Lord. That don't mean nothing to me. You don't understand, Pastor. You just don't understand. You don't get it. You don't understand what's going on in my life. That's how it looks. And, and that posture is you start putting your head yeah, yeah. in your hands. Yes. That's the way life looks sometimes. Yeah, and all you want to do is just head out and just say, you know what? I'm out of here. You just give up. You just give up. And giving up is also emotional. It's not just giving up. Giving up is draining. Huh? There, there's an emotional pain that comes with being overwhelmed by life's challenges. You're just looking for a ray of hope. I, just a sliver of life. Man, you, don't need to, you don't need the whole day up. You just need a little. That's why the songwriter said, but joy. What was he talking about? And we all understand. Because have you ever been sick at night? And what, and, and what went through your head? If I could just do what? Make it to the morning. I'll be all right. And, and what were you looking for? The first light that would come through that window. That's the joy coming in the morning. It's not when the sun is fully up. It's when that first ray of sunlight peaks above the horizon. You say, I made it. I made it to the morning. And your joy is restored. Let me give you a person in the scripture who felt that way. And we all know the story of Job. I know we all think of the more famous quote where he said, The Lord gives and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That was in chapter 1. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go words in chapter 1. Keep reading until you get around to chapter 40. Man, what you, Joe, Joe, Joe cursed God and swore. He said, I wish I had never been born. He thought it was hard in chapter 1. It ain't, it ain't got hard yet. No. That's why I said, uh -huh. sometimes life comes at you and you begin to despair. That's what happened to Job. Job was no superhero. Job began to despair. Job did what we tend to do. Blame God. Job blamed God. Mm -hmm. Job even accused God of being an enemy. Mm -hmm. Job talked about how faithful he had been to God. How he had served the Lord. And he said, and now you treat me like an enemy? Mm -hmm. So God told Job, why don't you meet me on the carpet then? Yeah. And God basically said, who do you think you are? Where are you, Joe? See, sometimes we as humans try to call God and his sovereignty in question. You might want to be a little careful with that. You might want to check that. Because who do you think you are? Yes, yes. Who do you think you are? But the truth of the matter is, Job was in the midst of a very deepening depression in his life. Life was hard. Life was difficult. And he was struggling. And this was a man who even preferred death because he saw thought, he thought it as a way of escape. Now, what he amassed was a hopeless situation. So, what does Job's struggle have to do with you and I? Why should we even care about what Job went through? The fact that he lost everything that he cared about. Job lost his entire family. He lost all of his wealth, he lost his reputation, and lastly, he lost his health. Job was tempted to give up. The common denominator in all of our struggles is a feeling. It's a, it's a feeling that comes over us of helplessness and hopelessness. That's what comes over us when things are becoming difficult for us. And when that happens, there is the temptation 
to give up. You don't want to sing the songs anymore. Yeah. You don't want to pray. You don't want to pray. You don't want to do any of that. We as believers want to give up. And that's when you see believers doing strange things. You see married people just going through the motions. Oh, come on, believe me. Believers going through the motions of, of loving their husband or loving their wife. Or walking around and telling people how God has blessed them with a, with a job. When in fact in their heart, they are not rejoicing in that job. Huh? It's called faking the funk. Oh yeah, child, I got this job. Because God is good and gave me this job. And then you curse the job. Because it's too hard to get to work here. Too long getting home. Call you in on the weekend. The same job that you were blessing God for. We begin to pretend and maintain our pretense. We have stopped being believers in Jesus Christ. And every one of us have faced the temptation to give up. I don't care who you are. We all begin to feel that it is pointless to keep trying. God told me, he said, Cloud, when you preach this, there are going to be people sitting here who are feeling that way right now. Because we are good at putting on our mask. And we all laugh. How you doing today? Good. Fine. Lying to your teeth. No, it ain't going good. No, it ain't going fine. But it just seems to be what you're supposed to say, y'all. And the truth of, if you tell somebody what's not going so well, they go like, well, I ain't got time. <laughs> Get back to me. So we really don't care how you feel. It's just something that we say. But when we put on our happy face, it hides a heart that is struggling. And it doesn't matter what the word of God says. I can do all things. Who cares? Don't you know I'm struggling right now? What then shall we say to these things? What? See, we know the words. We know the right words to say fine, good, when the truth of the matter is, you're walking away from what's hurting you. So how do we keep holding on when we feel like giving up? How do we find that strength to persevere, to go on? Where does the power come from that keeps on keeping on? So I just want to throw out three things that God gave me on what you should do when life pushes back. Of life, I'm, I'm, it's not fair. You remember I talked to this about the high, the high school graduate? I told you. You're going to find out as soon as you walk out of your mom and dad's house that life ain't fair. You're going to go to college and you're going to find out they really don't care about you. All they want to do is make sure your dad's check is good. That's their only concern. And beyond that, they don't care whether you apply yourself or not. Nobody's going to come to you and say, you better get down, sit down and get that lesson. You better make sure you go to class. Nobody's going to do that. You're going to feel like nobody really honestly cares and you'll be close to truth. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to worry about you. They're saying, you grow. You get you the class. <laughs> you pay the money, you get up out of the bed and go to class. Amen? I'm telling you how it works. I'm telling you from experience. They did that bed plenty of mornings. <laughs> Time to go to class. And would do it every time. We sign up for the eight o'clock class in the morning. It sounds good on the paper. Yes, I'm going to class first thing in the morning. I'm going to be through for the day. By eight, by nine o'clock, by ten o'clock, I'm through for the day. I just had one problem. I just couldn't get to that eight o'clock. Man, that thing sat there like a stone wall. Please. And the few times I did make it, I was half asleep. I don't hear nothing. Please. Nothing that that man said. But I went because something inside me said, don't worry, mom and daddy gonna get you. <laughs> daddy gonna be mad about paying that money. When you feel like giving up, first thing you gotta remember is that God is sovereign. You have to remember who we're talking about here. We're not talking, see, when we throw this name Jesus around, this is not some Jew boy that is good in the world. 
you know, he a little bit of good. Joseph and Mary, boy. He is not the man upstairs. Amen. See, we got all these little funny things that we say. You better recognize that he is God and he is sovereign. What does that mean in English? God is in control. Don't you ever doubt it. Oh, you think you're pulling some levers. Oh, that would be So I don't, it doesn't matter. See, you gotta see, you gotta see this thing from where God is. God says, come on, I understand that life sometimes becomes painful, unpleasant, and discouraging, but I am in control. I haven't stopped being in control. Why? Because, client, I have a purpose in your life. I have a purpose for you. And part of that purpose includes going through unpleasant things. I don't know why we seem to think that every day in Christ Jesus is a day like Disney World. No. No. When David wrote his song, he was walking through the valley of shadow of death. And God told him, David, don't you fear no evil. Why? Because I am with you. He didn't stop David from going through the valley. He said, but David, I will be with you as you go through the valley because you need this valley experience in your life. This valley experience is going to shape you, mold you. Let me tell you what a valley experience does. It builds character. That's what it does. It builds character. So then when you're on the mountaintop, you know how to act. Huh? It tempers huh, your judgment. 